Welcome to Higher Mind Yoga Podcast, episode number 10. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for participating. Uh, on this episode, I don't know, It's I, I broke out the old uh, keyboard here and uh, at the beginning there, I uh, f- was trying to play around with different frequencies and sounds uh, and I was searching for different frequencies and how they coincide with chakras and I found some interesting stuff online and uh, in in different publications and stuff Uh, but uh, the tonality then brought me to uh, different uh, aspects of uh, the number uh, 108 and if you are doing yoga or participating in this uh, in this particular study uh, you'll see that uh, the number 108 pops up a lot you'll be seeing that all over the place and so I decided you see it no I, I haven't heard any real explanation to it um, and there's a few resources online. Uh, so in, in religion and in the arts, what I found here, a lot of those websites uh, kind of go uh, that I've found kind of regurgitate the same thing over and over. And I kind of tried to boil it down. So uh, here, here's a little uh, in Hinduism. Yes. And uh, if uh, you're doing yoga, yes, there's the vastness and it comes from Hinduism. It's married, intertwined. And to kind of uh, separate it from that is uh, probably not the the wisest thing to do. But anyway, so in the Hindu tradition, uh, it seems that Shiva had 108 attendants. And hence, Shavya religion, particularly uh, Lingayats, use malas. So yes, the famous malas, Rudrashka malas uh, of 108 beads for prayers and meditation. And if you haven't tried yet... Uh, try to meditate, and if you you've advanced a little bit, uh, try to get yourself a nice mala. I have a couple of a couple. A friend of mine sent me one from India, bestowed upon me. Uh, and what you do, um, there's, there's various ways that I've seen online, but it looks like the most traditional way is to hold the beads in your hand and let them go over your ring finger, and as your Repeating your your mantra. Each bead goes by, and you'll have 108 beads, and a very auspicious number. And uh, we'll 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 get a little bit more. So, um, uh, Lord Krishna had 108 followers, uh, known as uh, gopis. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing everything, but uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, at least I am trying. Okay. So uh, recitals of their names often accompanied by counting of 108 beaded mala is often done during religious ceremonies. And it's also part of uh, Jainism, the religion of Jainism, or the following of Jainism. I'm not too familiar with that, and there is a description here. I'm not going to mumble it up, and I'm not exactly sure. So in Buddhism... Uh, this number is reached by multiplying the senses, smell, touch, taste, hearing, sight, and consciousness by whether they are painful, pleasant, or neutral, and then again by whether they are internally generated or externally occurring. And yet again, by past, present, and future, finally we get 108 feelings. Six times three times two times three equals 108. In Tibetan uh, Buddhism, malas, are usually, or the, their rosaries, are usually 108 beads, sometimes 101, including the guru beads, reflecting the words of the Buddha called in Tibetan the Kanjur Bhakgriyora in 108 volumes. Sorry, like I said, once again, if I'm mispronouncing, I am trying my best. Just trying to edify myself, and who knows? Uh, feel free to correct me. Feel free to correct me. But I don't hear too many people talking about this, so I figured I'd... Uh, Delve in and uh, see what's going on with that. And an interesting thing uh, in the neo Gnostic, uh, I don't know if anyone out there is delved into Gnosticism. 
Um, there's a neo-Gnosticism teachings by Samuel on War. I think that's pretty much how you pronounce that. Uh, and an individual has 108 chances, lifetimes, to eliminate his egos and transcend the material world before devolving and having the egos forcefully, forcefully removed in the infra dimension. Uh, Gnosticism. This brand of this neo-Gnosticism uh, branches from the early teachings of Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 if look into it, it's pretty interesting and amazing. Uh, the the Gospel of uh, Thomas is an interesting thing to read. Uh, it's kind of Jesus before the Romans <laughs> took over. But uh, we'll we'll leave that for another for another podcast. Um, so it seems like the the number one hundred eight is goes through a lot of different uh, meanings and versions, but a, a sacred number nonetheless. Nonetheless, uh, and the, in that first tone that you heard when the when the podcast started, uh, in my search of uh, the tonalities and all that stuff with the chakras, I came across a website which uh, actually uh, tied the chakras with with uh, frequencies of color, which seemed kind of interesting. And uh, chakra key, uh, chakra key dot com. So, uh, according to the the information of chakras, the chakras all they have different colors. Uh, the root chakra being red, and the corresponding frequency, according to this website, and uh, you can uh, cross reference this, is uh, four hundred and thirty two hertz. So then, if you take it down by octave. Two octaves below is 108. And I kind of like that one. And I was playing with, around with a few different octaves of it. Uh, and there's another interesting website that uh, kind of helps you uh, play around with these uh, tonalities if you want to play around. Uh, it's called uh, Online Tone Generator. OnlineToneGenerator.com. So you can play around with them. And you'll find different things on uh, uh, online, uh, on YouTube and uh, playing uh, different frequencies, and you, there, there is. What what I'm finding is there's, I guess, some science behind it and some kind of quackery behind it. But listen to the tones, listen to yourself, see if you feel a difference. Uh, don't let someone's uh, interpretation, you know, sully what you're experiencing. Uh, which is easy to be done. Just do a little research, and I, 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 I am the. <laughs> I am the self-proclaimed king of doing research and then just uh, unraveling something and going, oh, I can't, I can't f- listen to this or follow this person. I'll always find something. <laughs> and I, I, try, I try to keep it positive, but nonetheless, when things are strike you, you go, hmm, I don't know. But anyway, this, this seems uh, pretty interesting. And I, I like the way this breaks it down. I like the idea of the color frequency matching up with the chakra. And since chakras have this... Uh, so I'll I'll just give you uh, what the, what they're saying here. Um, so the root chakra is red, the the sacral chakra is orange, solar plexus is yellow, lower heart uh, is yellow green, and they have corresponding uh, frequencies and matching up with the colors. So I thought it'd be interesting to just play that. And at the beginning there, what you will hear is under an underlying tone of 108, uh, which corresponds with the A note. And what I did was on my keyboard, bring it down two octaves. And then at the beginning there, you'll hear a a chime. I had a a Tibetan bowl there. But that one is actually tuned to the uh, heart chakra. So I threw a little green frequency there. uh, And then I layered it over on the 108. So I don't know. I'm going to play around with that and see if uh, I can come up with something. Just playing with the, to- the, the tones and just dealing dealing with the feeling of it and just trying to, mm, I don't know, do I feel something? Do I not feel something? Is there something to this mystic number? Hmm, this mystical number. Uh, let's see, what else did I find here? Oh, in science, this is something uh, that, that keeps coming up. Uh, the distance from the earth, from the earth, from the sun is about 108 times the diameter of the sun. It's about uh, what I found uh, science-wise is actually closer to about 107.51. <laughs> and actual ratios vary from 105. So about. Okay, so there we go. About. 
And so in my research that I've been trying to do, uh, my limited research, I'll go a little bit deeper. I've just uh, kind of uh, scratched the surface uh, and just done a little internet uh, searches and trying to put this all together for uh, edification purposes of myself and whoever's listening to it. Uh, if you can, uh, you can hit me up on yoga at uh, gmail.com if you want to point me in the right direction or go a little deeper on the mystical number of 108. But I found uh, Sadhguru, uh, which if you're doing any research or studying yoga, you might have heard of him. Um, He's pretty big and popular in India. Uh, His stance on cannabis is a little weird, but nonetheless, I'll take the wisdom as it comes. So uh, for the next couple of minutes, you can listen to this little clip and uh, tell me what you get from it. Tell me what you get from it. Listen and enjoy and learn. Yoga is essentially understanding, aligning your system with the cosmic geometry. See, in the yogic system, we see the body as 114 chakras, 72,000 nadis meeting in 114 junctions, which are called as chakras. Out of these two are outside your body, 112 inside the body. Of this 112, there are four about which you don't have to do anything. They are like that. If other things work, they will flower by themselves. So there are only 108 with which you can work. So 108 has become significant. If you wear any beads, people wear 108 beads. If they say a mantra, 108, because these are the 108 chakras that you need to work with. This 108 number is significant and you will see it in the East. Everything is 108 because... The, the diameter of the sun and the distance between the earth and the sun is 108 times. The diameter of the moon and the distance between the moon and the earth is 108 times. The diameter of the earth and the diameter of the sun is 108 times. And in this body, there are 108 chakras that you can work upon. So the cosmic geometry, I can go into a lot of arithmetic which will match with your human system. And these things we have been conscious of and that is how we came up with eighty-four basic asanas. Out of these eighty-four, if you do twenty-one of them properly and you just master one, your system will get aligned with the cosmic system. Once it's aligned, everything that you need to know about the cosmos is right here. So, uh, pretty interesting, Uh, Sadhguru laying out some information there. So I don't know. I kind of, I'm kind of like, cro- I'm conflating uh, the number 108 since it's a sacred number, a mystical number that you see everywhere, if especially in uh, Eastern philosophies. Uh, so bringing it down, since it's uh, divisible to 432, so 432 hertz, which, uh, according to some research there with chakras, leads to the pointing to the root chakra. And then if you take the 432 hertz and do a little more research, they say this is the tone of the universe. May possibly be, may not be, or um, I don't know, research a little bit. Do yourself a favor. I'm, I'm trying to unravel this, and there is so much conflicting information on the Internet. Some people are saying, no, it's not. Some people are saying, yes, it is. There's all kinds of scientific uh, research. I even found a site where it uh, looks like at 40 hertz, at 40 hertz, Uh, There is some early stage scientific evidence that listening to a 40 hertz tone can reverse some of the molecular changes in the brain of Alzheimer's patients. So I don't know if you believe in sound healing. I don't know. Little research. This is one of these things that the sound could, uh, it it could be true, but uh, early results are very promising. And it, it, it points to research here. Uh, I'll, I'll place a link on uh, you know where, HigherMindYoga.com, where you can help the podcast out for as little as one dollar. Uh, it should be pointing to the Patreon site. It may be still pointing uh, to a Tumblr site, but nonetheless, uh, I'll post on both. Uh, and uh, if you go to Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. 
dot com slash HMY for Higher Mind Yoga. You can help the podcast out for as little as one dollar. So I'm going to read a little bit about this information. Uh, so um, the science so far on this tonality and what, uh, what I found here in this research here. Uh, so it, it has been known since at least the 1980s that cognitive activity triggers uh, brain waves, wave-like patterns of activation, a frequency of 40 hertz in humans and other animals. In 1991, researchers from NYU Medical Center discovered that Alzheimer's patients have a reduced 40 hertz brain waves compared with healthy people. And there's a paper on that. Uh, you can check that out. I'll, I'll set up the links. In uh, 2016, MIT Alzheimer's Group did experiments on transgenic mice with an early Alzheimer's disease and found that exposing them to light frequencies flickering at uh, 40 hertz, uh, so that's 40 times a second, for one hour a day for seven days caused an almost 60% reduction in amyloid plaques, which are a molecular, molecular hallmark of Alzheimer's. Flickering at 20 hertz and 80 hertz did not have the same effect. And an important qualification here is that the effect was limited to the visual cortex, which is not significantly affected in human uh, Alzheimer's patients. Here's an accessible, and uh, there's a report there that you can check out. I'll, uh, I'll post a link to this article, and you can judge for yourself. Judge it for yourself. And if you're finding information, hey, pass it on down yoga at gmail.com. In March 2016, scientists at University of Toronto published the results of a small placebo-controlled pilot uh, study in which they exposed 20 Alzheimer's patients uh, to a 40 uh, hertz sound. After six 30-minute sessions done twice a week, the patient's average score on the 30 points slum scale improved by four points. While the placebo group did not improve... It should be noted that the dosage of treatment was rather low, which may explain the modest results. Pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know if you believe in sound healing or whatever, but that, give it a shot. At, at the worst, uh, you'll uh, you might find something you like or find something you dislike. That's that's the worst that could happen. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting stuff on the internet. But uh, I suggest you give it a shot. <laughs> That's all you can do. That's all you can do. See if it adheres to your body. See if you can enjoy it. See if it does anything. And do a little research. Edify yourself. If you're involved in uh, yoga or any of these other disciplines... It's good to know what you're doing and kind of know where it's coming from and see what surrounds it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, wondrous scientific and sort of magical stuff out there to, to explore and learn. Uh, and if you haven't yet, try a little meditation with sound vibration or not. Start your practice five minutes a day. And if you already have, that's great. Pass it down the line. There's no need to, uh, I guess, bore someone or force someone or just keep, oh, you know, how you haven't meditated, that's, that's the wrong way. But I just find that little glimmer of, 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 of insight or that little moment where you can see that someone uh, is lost in unconsciousness and it's something that I strive to get a grip on sometimes it's nice and easy or I'm, I'm coasting back here in my meditative mind and I'm watching everything but sometimes you just get caught up in that ego and it kind of if you, if, I guess if you could I guess if I could um code these emotions in sound or color I could but they probably v vibrate up and down if I could find some kind of scientific meter to uh, to gauge my emotions but I guess the the key thing with all of this is awareness so 
So try to find that that frequency. I guess. I guess it. I guess it would be. It would be a mental state, a frequency. Because it looks like everything has some kind of frequency of solidity, frequency of sound, frequency of color, and. I found another another article here researching the brainwave frequencies behind your mood. I don't know. Let's 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 delve in a little bit. So the human brain is a constant process of billions of neurons sending the receiving signals of electrical impulses. This complex interaction is what drives your experience of life right down to your moods, thoughts, and senses. A brainwave is how we can describe the various states of electrical activity, known as brainwave pattern. Depending on what you do, uh, be doing or experiencing, your brain waves will vary. For example, these waves are different uh, when you are awake compared to when you are sleeping. To measure brain waves activity, sensitivity equipment called the EEG is used. Oh, there you go. I should have known that. Uh, Hertz is the abbreviation for HD is the abbreviation for Hertz. This, this is a unit of measured frequency, uh, and it defines uh, one cycle per second. The higher the hertz, the faster the brainwave activity. Interesting. So gamma waves are the fastest range with frequencies from 27 hertz and up. The state of mind is ideal for formation of new ideas, learning something new, and processing large amounts of information. Uh, in this state of mind, various parts of your brain are being processed simultaneously, which will sometimes result in spontaneous bursts of creative insights. Try listening to a little 27 hertz. See if we can multiply it up if that's too low. Bring it a couple of octaves up. See if that works. This heightened brain... Uh, this, that's me interjecting into this article. The heightened uh, brain state is associated with peak concentration and extreme le levels of cognitive functioning. I'll post a link to this article too. Some interesting stuff here. Um, so, I don't know. I kind, of, uh, I kind of melded together the sacred number 108 and uh, sound healing which might correlate or maybe not. <laughs> so just having a little fun, enjoying and trying to uh, just just figure this out. Just have fun with it. Uh, you know, learning is fun. So did you do any yoga today? What kind of yoga did you do? <laughs> what is yoga to you? I have a little, I have a, a hard time digesting uh corporate yoga or what they deem as yoga i don't know i i uh i have a youtube channel if you haven't gone over there higher mind yoga on youtube yep i post different things on there uh the podcast is on the youtube channel also if i feel inspired to do a guided meditation i'll throw it up there and and i'll watch various things something that i've been uh listening to a lot is just to do a search if you're into alan watts there's a few people putting up 24-hour streams of Alan's Watts uh, teachings, which are very interesting. Um, hopefully, uh, his estate is getting something from this. But nonetheless, uh, so while while uh, sitting back and relaxing and uh, trying to listen to some Alan Watts radio, you know, an ad would pop up uh, before or after, or, or and and one of the one of the ads just I don't know just for this I'm gonna say the name a yoga pod, and it was just like, what is this? <laughs> I don't know. It just uh, hit me the hit me the wrong way. But uh, it's it, it's a, some kind of commercialized, uh, aerobicized yoga. Uh, and as I went through the videos, I don't know. Just a, just a, uh, nothing nothing personal. But it's this is that, that's not yoga. <laughs> just because you do a few asanas um, and uh, you know claim that it's uh, you know beneficial. But it looked like an aerobics class with flashing lights and, you know, the beautiful people. And I, I don't know. I don't know. So the bastardization of yoga goes on. So hopefully with a little knowledge and edification, we can get to the heart of it. Because in the end, uh, through the, all the research that I'm doing and trying to, from the Bhagavad Gita to uh, the sutras to just listening to stuff uh, by Alan Watts, uh, Eckhart Tolle, uh, all kinds of things. The basis of all this is to find stillness. Enough stillness within that you can find union 
with something greater. Now, when I say something greater, you know, I, I don't, you know, you're, right away, the, the language is very, very limited. And you might think, oh, you know, here he goes talking about some, you know, I don't, I don't even like to use the word God. Because that brings up different connotations. So I'll frame it in this way. Um, a psychological term that was coined by French writer Romain Roland called the Oceanic Feeling. It was popularized by Sigmund Freud in his books The Future of an Illusion and Civilization and His Discontents to criticize the psychological feeling of religion. So, so what Roland did was, what he was trying to turn was the oceanic feeling of feeling that you're part of something larger, something bigger, feeling limit, limitless, according to Roland's definition of the term. This feeling is the source of all religious energy which permeates the various religious systems. It is a sensation of the indissoluble bond as of being connected with external worlds in an integral form. This feeling is an inter entirely subjective fact and is not an article of faith. Roland's view is that one may justifiably call oneself religious on the basis of the oceanic feeling alone. Sigmund Freud later uh, disavowed and wasn't and, uh, did not like that coin phrase uh, but Alan Watts actually, I listened to a lecture of his and he talked about the oceanic feeling uh, that, yes, ch a child has that feeling, possibly. I could imagine that. Imagine, just think back, think back when you were, a, if you could, if you could go back to that feeling of being a fetus and floating in the oceanic vibrations of the womb where your mother is and listening to that heartbeat and then being pushed out into this world and somehow there is this oceanic feeling being one not knowing not being not being polluted with the ego or what you're supposed to be or the role you're supposed to play and the way alan watts put it was a the maturing of the oceanic feeling Interesting. Interesting. So another way to look at your spirituality, your connectedness to the world, to the universe, to nature. Probably a nice place to be without the, all the dogma and all the other prejudices and nonsense and, and basically... Unfortunately, religion has become some kind of power play in a lot of ways. But anyway, en enough of that <laughs> before I stray off completely off the subject. But uh, I thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. Do a little research on your own. I'm scrambling around here trying to figure it out here on Higher Mind Yoga, the podcast. Until next time. Be well. Namaste.